Hello, welcome to Arvind Singh Academy. We are discussing today a mathematical tool. This is the basic tool uh, that is a mathematics which will be applicable in physics. And so the basic knowledge of mathematical tool is required for studying physics. In this uh, lecture, uh, this topic in fact, not only in this lecture, but in this topic, we will discuss uh, something, some basic knowledge of algebra, which will be useful in physics. Thereafter, we will discuss some basic knowledge of trigonometry that will be also useful for physics in physics. Some graphs, there will be also a part of uh, differentiation and uh, integration will be also there. Maximum and minimum will be also there and vector algebra will be also there. So these are some topics which we will discuss in mathematical tool. But uh, remember one thing that we are not going to be master of these topics. Uh, we are just uh, understanding the basic concept of these topics and we will discuss the limitation of these topics will be up to uh, understanding the physics and the application in physics only not uh, becoming the master of all these topics uh, as uh, what we expect in mathematics. So we will uh, discuss one by one and just elementary knowledge of this topic. So don't expect that you are going to be master of all these, but uh, yes, uh, you will understand each and every topic in a manner which will be uh, useful in physics and wherever it will be used, uh, you will be able to understand it. So I hope that you will definitely enjoy this topic. This is not a physics, but in fact, it is a mathematics, but uh, their application is in physics. So that is why it is necessary to understand first uh, these topics before uh, applying further in physics. So let us start this topic today and uh, what we will learn in these topics that I'm going to write a few topics and thereafter we will uh, come back again and discuss uh, topic one by mathematical tool. So, mathematical tool, let us write here, mathematical tool, tools. In this, we will discuss two topics and these are uh, several topics I can say. Uh, one is trigonometry, trigonometry, basic trigonometry. The second topic we will discuss is algebra. The third topic we will discuss is graphs. Right. The fourth topic is vector algebra. Vector algebra. Right now. The fifth one is logarithms. Basic knowledge of logarithms is also required. Right now. The sixth topic is differentiation, differentiation and then integration, integration, right now. and integration uh, indefinite and definite rule. And uh, there are some geometry also. So these are some topics which we need to discuss uh, in this uh, mathematical tool. Let me write it. Uh, vector algebra. Vector algebra. This is the second. This is third. This is fourth. Right. So let us start from trigonometry today, and uh, we will discuss one by one. So in trigonometry. Trigonometry what we have to learn. In trigonometry, basically we have to learn some formula and some quadrant system. Also the angle concept of plane angle. So in trigonometry, the angle is 
defined as the angular displacement of a particle right now so angular displacement of a particle while moving in a circular orbit then that is called as an angle if a uh, particle starts from this a and move to b then angle the angular displacement is described as if this is a center say particle start from a and go to b then that will be the angular displacement uh, is described as an angle and this one is said to be an angle this one is an angle and this angle is described that is called angle right now so angular displacement angle is in fact the angular displacement you have learned linear displacement earlier and this is called angular displacement of particle starting from a to b that is measured in terms of angle so angle can be the unit of angle is radian the standard unit of si unit of an angle is radian and radian is defined as radian is defined as the ratio of the ratio of the ratio of arc well arc to the radius of a radius of a circle is defined as defined as an angle right so therefore we can say angle is equal to arc upon radius angle is arc upon radius and si unit is what in radian so we can say that this angle must be measured in terms of radian in radian right a radian measure si unit arc upon radius so angle theta is equal to therefore theta is equal to s upon r s is r equal length and we can say theta is equal to s upon r right so this is what about the uh, angle this angle can be measured so a circular angle even a circular angle the whole angle of a circle that is called circular angle circular angle is equal to total arc length total arc length arc length upon radius and therefore total arc length is what is the circumference 2 pi r upon r r r cancel so that is why 2 pi radian total angle subtend at center in a circle is 2 pi radian the angle can be measured in three uh, units there are two other systems also there are two other system two other system of measurements of an angle system of measurements of an angle measurements of an angle and that is called second one is called degree and third one is called grade grade while first one is what first one is radian you know this the relation between them is the relation between degree radian and grade is degree radian and grade and grade is given by is given by this relation and what is that 180 degree or even 360 degree one circular angle that is 2 pi radian is equal to 400 grade degree radian and grade this is g for grade right now and this is a degree so better to learn that 180 degree is equal to pi radian radian is equal to 200 grade and now you can interchange one among other so one degree grade is outdated uh, there is no longer huge but you have to understand this because it is one of the unit and uh, in the british system the huge grade and sexagesimal system there is a degree and circular system there is a grade radian 
so that all uh, usually discuss but uh, you should know that how to interchange one degree into radian so clearly one degree is equal to pi upon 180 radian this is the knowledge and one radian is equal to radian is equal to 180 by pi degree right now so these two informations also important and if you learn these two also definitely it will be very useful right now and similarly you can convert in grade as well thereafter uh, some more uh, information is required for micro observation this degree is and uh, radian also grade also divided into further so one uh, degree is equal to remember one degree is equal to 60 minutes minutes and the symbol is like this and one minute is equal to 60 seconds that is called seconds so remember these two also one degree is equal to 60 minutes it is not minute of time it is minute of degree right now minutes remember and one minute is equal to 60 seconds similarly uh, there is some other lesson one grade is equal to 100 minutes minutes right now. and this minute is like this inclination will be like this and one minute is equal to 100 seconds in grade system right now seconds so this is just to differentiate the inclination will be this side and then this inclination will be from uh, right to left to right and that is from right to left so inclination but these are in grade system and that was in uh, degree system so because they are divided further into 60 and 60 then they are they are said to be the system are said to be six adjustment system you must have studied uh, this in mathematics and because these are divided into hundreds hundred and hundred so they are said to be centesimal system centesimal system that is called British system right now so cent means hundred uh, when in Britain cent means hundred so so that is why this is called centesimal system now uh, angle uh, you have understood that there are three units of measurements of an angle now you understand that how angle is taken to be um, positive negative and uh, what will be the positive what will be negative and why this is said to be these are fourth quadrant these are called quadrants one two three and four these are called quadrants so when two perpendicular line divide each other perpendicularly they are called quadrants right now so if angle this is called initial line this one is called initial line right and angle measured in this direction is taken as positive angle angle measured in this direction is taken as negative so angle measured from this direction uh, from in first quadrant that will be 0 to 90 this angle is if you're starting from here then that must be 0 degree right now if you will start from here then this is called 0 right now because it is here only. this one is 90 degree this one is 180 degree and this one is 270 degree 90 degree is also equal to pi by 2 180 is nothing equal to nothing else but pi and 300 and 270 degree is nothing else but 3 pi by 2 so when angle lies between when say angle theta lies between 0 to 90 then it is called angle lies in first quadrant first quadrant right if theta is more than 90 and less than or equal to 180 then this is called in second quadrant second quadrant right if uh, theta is more than 180 and less than or equal to 270 then this is called in third quadrant quadrant right and if angle is more than 270 and less than or equal to 360 less than 360 uh, then it is said to be 
fourth quadrant. If it is equal to 360, then it must be in equal to 0. So that is called fourth quadrant. Right? Quadrant. So angle, depending upon the quadrant, their value will be also defined. So again, in first quadrant, sine and let me write here. In first quadrant and second quadrant, say this is a first quadrant second quadrant, third quadrant and fourth quadrant isn't it? So in first quadrant sin n it's a reciprocal that is cosec theta, theta is positive. Sin theta and cosec theta sorry tan theta cot theta sec theta cosec theta all are positive. So instead of writing all the six we can say all are positive in this quadrant all are positive in this quadrant. All are positive. In second quadrant, sin theta is positive. In this one is tan theta is positive and this one in this fourth quadrant cos theta is positive. So you can remember it all sin tan cos or after school to college. If sin is positive then reciprocal of sin that is cosec they are also positive. So sine and cosec are positive. Tan and reciprocal of tan is cot. So it will be also positive. Cos and reciprocal of say, cos is sec. They are positive. So each trigonometric functions are positive in two quadrants and negative in other two quadrants. Remember this. So it will be uh, basically you can understood like this that they are six trigonometric uh, function, right? and they are positive in first quadrant, second quadrant and third quadrant and fourth quadrant as well. So here we can write it uh, sine and cosec, right? This is first quadrant, then it is a second quadrant, third quadrant and fourth quadrant, isn't it? So we can uh, draw a table regarding this. Let me pause this video and draw this table. So now table is ready and we can fill up here. This is the functions. Functions, trigonometric functions and here is the quadrants. Quadrants, right? This is first quadrant, second quadrant, third quadrant and fourth quadrant. You may remember. And the value of uh, function is here sine and cosec. Sine and cosec theta. Cosec theta sin theta and cosec theta if they lie in right here let me write completely sin theta and cosec theta and cosec theta if in positive in first quadrant and second quadrant as well and negative in third and fourth tan theta and cot theta cot theta they are positive in first and third and negative in second and fourth cos theta and sec theta and sec theta is positive in first and fourth and negative in second and third. So I hope you got this and you remember after school to cinema and accordingly it will be positive or negative. Uh, one basic knowledge which you must have no, uh, studied in class uh, 10th, 9th but let me remind you just remind, don't uh, think that I am taking you into, uh, I underestimated, underestimated you, um, but uh, this is the basic things, so I have to tell, just because many of them are missing, so let me start. This one is a right angle triangle, and everybody knows this, this is a right angle triangle, here A, B, C is a right angle triangle, where this is a high, right angle and opposite side of right angle is called hypotenuse right and if this is a theta then opposite side of that is called opposite side opposite side right and this one is the rest of the side is called an adjacent side adjacent side popularly hypotenuse uh, 
this two opposite side is also called perpendicular right now and this one is called base right now. so perpendicular and base simply uh, this is also called hypotenuse is h perpendicular is b and base is b so sin theta uh, is described as sin theta is equal to opposite side that is p by h and reciprocal of that is cos theta so h by p cos theta is equal to b by h so sec theta is equal to h by b and tan theta is p by b so cot theta reciprocal of that is b by p now uh, this i have just told you because uh, i would like to give some other ideas as well you have the sin 90 minus theta so just to explain this sin 90 minus theta is equal to cos theta cos 90 minus theta is sin theta cos 90 degree minus theta is sin theta tan 90 degree minus theta is cot theta and cot 90 degree minus theta is tan theta right sec 90 degree minus theta is cosec theta and cosec 90 degree minus theta is nothing else but sec theta cosec 90 minus theta cosec 90 minus theta is sec theta so why it is so because 90 minus theta angle lies in first quadrant and in first quadrant uh, all angles are positive so that is why all of them are positive in first quadrant uh, 90 minus theta is an angle lies in first quadrant so here uh, we can write it we can do it Here. 90 minus theta is first quadrant in first quadrant this is a y axis this is x axis this is x dash say this is y dash so 90 minus theta is an angle lesser than 90 degree it is less than 90 degree so it lies in first quadrant this is 90 minus theta so angle if 90 minus theta lies in first quadrant so it will be all of them are positive say if it is more than 90 degree then what will happen in more than 90 then this angle lies in second quadrant and in second quadrant here 90 plus theta lies in second quadrant similarly 270 minus theta angle come starting from here and come to this then it will be 270 but less than 270 minus theta it will lie in uh, third quadrant so 270 minus theta lies in third quadrant and uh, again if i am writing here that 270 plus theta then it will be in fourth quadrant 270 plus theta so odd integral multiple of 90 degree that is 90 and 270 is also three times multiple you know so three times of multiple so odd multiple of 90 plus minus theta function will change sign will change in terms of cos and tan will change in terms of cot, cos in terms of sine, vice versa, cot in terms of tan, sec in terms of cosec and cosec in terms of sec. So odd multiple of 90 degree plus minus theta function will change, remember this. And sine will depend on the quadrant in which angles lie. So here 90 plus theta, all of them 90 minus theta lie in first quadrant so they are positive. If I will write 90 plus theta, then what will happen? For example, if I am writing sine 90 plus theta, 90 plus theta is an angle lies in second quadrant and in second quadrant, remember sine is positive, so it will be cos theta. But cos 90 plus theta, cos 90 plus theta, 90 plus theta angle lies in second quadrant and in second quadrant, cos is negative. So it will be minus sine theta. Function will change, but sine will be negative. I, I hope you got this point. 
Similarly, if someone write tan 90 minus 270 minus theta, then 270 minus theta lies in third quadrant. And in third quadrant, this is second quadrant, this is third quadrant. In third quadrant, where this one is fourth quadrant and this one is first quadrant. In third quadrant, tan is always positive. So function will change, tan will change in terms of cot theta. But remember, the sign will be positive. But if I am writing here ki cos 90 to 70 minus theta, then the angle lies in third quadrant and third quadrant cos is negative. So it will be again minus sin theta. Function will change, but uh, but sin will change on depending upon the quadrant in which angle lies. Right now. So similarly, if I am writing here sin 90 270 minus theta, then what will happen? 270 plus theta say sin 270 plus theta lies in fourth quadrant and in fourth quadrant sin is negative so it will be minus cos theta think about this not about this so sin 270 plus theta is minus cos theta again if i am writing here that tan 270 plus theta then what will happen then also because angle lies in fourth quadrant and fourth quadrant tan is negative so it will be minus cot theta so I hope you got this odd multiple of 90. Remember this point that odd multiple of trigonometric ratio, right now, TR, trigonometric ratio and odd multiple of odd multiple of 90 degree plus minus theta, then function will change. Function will change. Remember this. This is very important point. Trigonometric ratio. TR is trigonometric ratio. And again, TR. Even multiple of 90. Even multiple of 90 degree plus minus theta. Function will not change. Function will not change. Right? The sign of trigonometric ratio, sign of trigonometric ratio, trigonometric ratio will depend on, will depend on an angle, angle lies in quadrant, quadrant, right? Which quadrant? So that is the very important thing. Remember this, this is a very important one, right now. So for example, if I am writing sin 180 plus theta, let me write few examples, sin 180 minus theta. 180 is two times multiple of 90 and two is an even number. So function will not change. And sin, we will take care of sin. And how sin will uh, think about? Here, let me draw one more so that it will be convenient to explain this thing. Okay. This one is this one is 90 degree, this one is 0 and this one is 180 degree right now, this one is 270 degree or even this can be also described as 360 degree. So 180 minus theta lies in here. 180 minus theta lies in where? Less than 180. So clearly it will be 180 minus theta lies in second quadrant. Again, if it is more than 180, then it will lie in which quadrant? It will lie in this quadrant, 180 plus theta, isn't it? So, 180 minus theta in this quadrant and 180 plus theta in lies in third quadrant. Again, 360 plus theta, similarly, if I write here 360 plus theta, then where it will lie? It will lie in 360 plus theta, it means it will lie in first quadrant and less than 360 then it will lie in fourth quadrant 
right now. So he that will be okay. So I can write here this image at right. So these are few things. So here it will lie 360 minus theta. 360 that is 4 times multiple of 90. 360 minus theta and this is 360 plus theta. Means changing along this initial line, the function will not change. Sine will remain sine and 180 minus theta lies in second quadrant and in second quadrant sine is always positive. This is first, this is third quadrant, this one is fourth quadrant. So here sine is always positive, so it will be sine theta. But if I will write here cos 180 minus theta, it will be cos 180 minus theta, then it will be minus cos theta. Similarly, cos 180 plus theta is also minus cos theta. Function will not change and this sign will change depending upon the quadrant. 180 minus theta whether it lies in second quadrant or 180 plus theta lies in third quadrant. In both the quadrant, second and third quadrant, cos is always negative. See this? In second and third quadrant, cos is always negative. Negative here, negative here. So, cos is always negative in second and third quadrant. So, depending upon the quadrant, they will be, they will have value. If I write tan when 180 plus theta, then what will happen? This lies in third quadrant and third quadrant tan is always positive. So, it will be tan theta. Means function will not change. Sine will remain sine, cos will be remain cos, tan will be remain tan. Even in fourth quadrant, if I write tan 180, 360 minus theta, then 360 minus theta is an angle lies in fourth quadrant. Fourth quadrant tan is always negative. So we can write minus tan theta, etc. So I hope you got this, how the transformation of angle takes place. Even multiple of 90 degree function will not change. Odd multiple of 90 degree function will change and sign will change depending upon the quadrant in which an angle lies. Right now, one more example I can take here, even uh, so that, see, this one is sine 360 minus theta. What is that? 360 minus theta is minus sine theta because in third quadrant, fourth quadrant, sine is also negative. 360 minus theta can be also written as minus theta because angle is similarly sine cos minus theta if I will write then angle must be in fourth quadrant. Remember this, in this direction angle is taken as negative. What I said here, in this direction angle is taken as negative. So angle is taken as negative and this fourth quadrant cos and sine are, uh, cos and sec are positive and all other four are negative. So we will write here cos minus theta is cos theta. Remember this. Similarly, uh, if I write sec minus theta, that will be sec theta. Right now, cos minus theta, sin minus theta is minus sin theta. Sin minus theta is in fourth quadrant, it will be negative. So minus sin theta, tan minus theta is minus tan theta sec minus theta is sec theta already written here cosec that is minus cosec theta right now and uh, minus cosec theta and uh, cot minus theta is minus cot theta like this so angle because theta is an angle and that angle is taken negative in negative direction so here we can write this sin theta, cos theta, tan theta, this is the initial line, you know, and uh, this is initial axis, you can say. Angle measured in this direction is always negative angle, and here cos and sec are positive, and all other four are negative. So, this is also important one. Now, how to use this? What we have learned, how to use this? That let me explain a few things about that. Suppose uh, you have some trigonometric ratio value of trigonometric ratio, you have learned it 
and uh, I hope you have learned but still I would like to give some value which will be useful to learn right now. So here are some this table remember this table and uh, in this table I am writing the value of functions few functions here the such function here is a function and uh, then there is a 0 degree 0 degree and then 30 degree 30 degree and then 45 degree 45 degree you see and then 90 degree then you can write 120 degree 120 degree 150 degree and 180 degree like that not necessary to learn all of them right now but you can do it just for sake of convenience and for learning ability okay so you can do that okay so these are some values say i have written here 0 degree 30 degree 45 degree 60 degree 90 degree 120 degree 150 degree and 180 degree as well so you can go ahead any number of values you can write here and this is a function trigonometric function now i'll write here that is sine theta sine is 0 is 0 right now sine 0 is 0 sine theta and theta is like this so theta is 0, theta is 30, theta is 45, theta is 60 like that. So sin 0 is 0, sin 30 is 1 by 2, sin 45 is 1 by root 2, sin 60 is root 3 by 2, sin 90 is 1 and again this is going to uh, decrease this sin 3 by 2 and this is sin 50 is 1 by 2 like that I have written. How is that? Let me explain this and then cos theta say cos theta is cos 0 is 1 this is uh, root 3 by 2 this is 1 by root 2 this is 1 by 2 and 0 again in second quadrant 120 lies in second quadrant i'll put the value later on when we will calculate it and explain it tan theta tan 0 is 0 tan 30 is 1 by root 3 tan 45 is 1 and tan 60 is root 3 and tan 90 is not defined, tan 120 that would be also negative and 150 but let me uh, calculate and then I will show you. You have to calculate tan 120, cos 120. So how to calculate cos 120? Uh, let me do this question, cos 120 degree if you want to calculate you can write cos 180 minus 60 or 180 is even multiple of 90 degrees so function will not change but if this angle lies in second quadrant isn't it 180 minus theta so it will be minus cos 60 and cos 60 is what 1 by 2 so value will be minus 1 by 2 this can be also calculated by using this uh, 90 plus 30 and then you can write sine 30 minus sine 30 minus sine 30 is also 1 by 2 similarly cos 150 is equal to what cos 180 minus 30 and that will be minus cos 30 and that is minus root 3 by 2. Similarly tan 120, tan 120 is nothing else but tan 180 minus 60 that is minus tan 60 which is minus root 3. Similarly you can calculate tan 150 degree is tan 180 minus 30 that is minus tan 30 is equal to minus 1 by root 3. So you can put the values here uh, minus 1 by 2 and minus root 3 by 2. The values are minus 1 by 2, minus 1 by 2 and minus root 3 by 2 for tan this is minus root 3 and minus 1 by root 3. So these are some values I have calculated. You have to remember just 1, 2, 3, 4 only. That will be more than enough. No need to remember. Even maximum you can memorize up to this and you have already 
uh, remember this and memorize this in class 10. So it will be also advised the same between here. And uh, how to calculate what is the use of all these 90 minus theta, 180 minus theta, etc. That you understood that how to calculate and how to use the value of other trigonometric value uh, more than 90 degree, that is 120, 150, 180, 210, 330, etc. Uh, you can calculate by using this formula. So I hope uh, you have uh, understood all these things and uh, basic idea about the trigonometry. Um, thereafter, one more lecture will be there on trigonometry in which we will discuss some uh, compound formula and compound angles. Maybe one or two more lecture in trigonometry will be there. So, after the break, we will discuss them. Uh, till then, God bless you. Keep watching and don't forget to subscribe this channel. Thank you. Thank you very much.